create multiple views of the same character with mid journey. Hello, my friends, how are you doing? So here we have kind of a new view, a new format, and I want to show you a super cool trick you can do with mid journey. And that is to create different perspectives of the same character. Now I want to show you this for comic characters, but also for realistic characters, like with a photo. Now, what is the idea here? Of course, if you have comic characters, 3D characters, the cool thing is if you want to design them to draw them afterwards yourself or to create 3D models, things like that, you want to have a side view, a front view, a back view. So it is good to create these kind of character sheets, but also you might want to create expression sheets to have different facial expressions. Expressions. So here is the first example, and you can see here from the prompt that is used. So really interesting what is saying in there about the description of the character, but then very important, it is saying character sheet, which is one of these versions that you can use for a sheet, which is going to be the main theme here to create a repeating character that looks the same in different views. So in this one, you can see we have a front view and then also we have a back view of the same character, which is absolutely helpful. Now here we have another kind of sheet. Again, check out the prompts, it's really interesting. In this case, again, description of the character, how the character looks, but then it says, full body reference sheet. Now, of course, a reference sheet is different from what we have seen before. And here we have a close up view. And then also we have full body views from the front, from the side with variations of the same clothing, which is absolutely amazing and super helpful if you want to explain, if you want to show to your team or to a freelancer what you actually want to have, what they should create for you. So this is really cool, but also, of course, for your own artistic purposes. Now in the next example, this is going to be a little more cute. We are going into the comic style here. Really cool, different character design. So in this case, as you can see here, we have character design sheet in the prompt. Also notice how this is using S for stylized 750 minus minus applied. Applied can be pretty good if you want to work with these line arts, with these vector characters, with reduced details or more flatter colors and gradients in like a comic drawing or things like that. Also in this case, you can see this is using minus minus Q2 for quality too, which is really helping with these kind of images. And also I want to point out often they might from the face expression not look so good when you have them in a small format, but then when you upscale them, the face details will improve. So you actually have to upscale them to see the actual quality of what you're getting with this. In the next example, we have our first 3D character. And here it is really important to look at the prompt where it says for game concept art T-pose. Now this isn't a T-pose, but I found in the prompt by testing it that T-pose actually helps a lot. And here we see that this is called a reference sheet. And by the way, another thing I want to point out here that's very important is you can use different ratios. Now, when you use, for example, two by one ratio, so you get a really wide picture, you might get more views and more characters in that view, but also they might be clipped on the top or below. So when you have a square format, it is more likely that the characters are actually inside the image. Here we have another amazing example of the same character. In this case, again, look at the prompt where it says expression sheet. So there's a lot of different types of sheet. Knowing the names of these sheet really helps you to reach your goal of what you want to have. Now, I want to point out here that the expression sheet works the best with comic characters because, of course, there it is used the most. So the model is trained most on that. If you want to have photographies or hyper realistic images, the expression sheet often doesn't work so well. And another thing I want to show here before I go to the photorealistic sheets is that you can create a similar type of character, but in a big variation. So in this game, again, we have in the prompt video game and then we have character faces. So it says sheet of emojis. 
Okay, so let's switch over to Discord where I want to show you my method. Now here for photorealistic images, what I found is to use a reference image from the internet. Now this is from FreePick. I downloaded it. I have a premium subscription, but you can also source other sources like Pexels, like Unsplash for free images. This will help you a lot. First of all, to define the character in the different details, what you want to have in the image. You can, of course, also use your own photos and then also give a reference of the style of the character, of the look and the age of the character. This can be very helpful. Now, I would very much suggest to you that you still describe the character a little bit in the prompt. So you can see here I'm writing Viking woman, full body, which is not the body weight. It is more that I wanted to have a full body, but this only works sometimes. Red hair, that's very important. Photorealistic. Then I'm using colon colon. So I make a multi prompt. I split this up. Next comes same character, multiple poses colon colon to split that up again. Then I write sheet in this case, not character sheet or anything, just sheet minus minus a r two by one minus minus v four. And for that, in most cases, I get three characters. Now you can see in this case, they are clipped a little bit on the top. But in most cases, they have similar features. It is a similar woman here. The clothing is a little bit different between the characters. Here I have used a second source image again from free pick. For that, I use exactly the same prompt, but I'm writing blonde hair. And you can see that I'm getting some beautiful results, photorealistic of the same person, but from different sides. The cool thing here is also once you've found an image that you like, that you can create variations. Now for this, I turned off the remix function in the settings of Midjourney because I found that I get better results by just using the variations button without remix. So you can see when we use these variations, you get more slight variations here, for example, in the clothing, in the jewelry, and a little bit also in the hairstyle. Now I also tried the same thing without a reference photo. In that case, you have less control over what is coming out from the image and also the clothing of your character. But as you can see here with this result, it actually works surprisingly well. And you can see that in the three pictures here, we have the same person from different sides, but with the same clothing, same hairstyle. Now, last but not least, I want to point out that, of course, in this case, because you're creating three versions of a character in one image, also you only have a third of the space of the resolution for the character. So, of course, the base resolution is going to be smaller for each of these pictures. But of course, you can upscale this with another software, for example, Stable Diffusion or Gigapixel or any other tool you prefer to do that. Let me know in the comments what kind of amazing methods you found to create versions of the same character. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.